Hi, I'm Luke Hodgkin from Inter Tennis and I'm the head coach here at Aintree Tennis Club. In today's video, I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about tennis grips. So we're gonna go through how to hold the grips, the hand position, grip pressure, changing the grip and more. We've got a lot to get through, so let's get started. All right, now let's talk about some quick ways to find your grips. To find a continental grip, a quick way to do that is to get the V of your hand and run it down the grip. A quick way of finding your eastern forehand grip is to put your finger into the throat of the racket like this all right, and then slide it down. Some people also like to say shake hands with the racket. To find the semi-western grip, we can put the racket on the ground. I can spread my fingers out and press my palm into the grip, pinch it and then pick it up. A quick way to find your eastern backhand grip is to run your thumb along the back of the grip. That will get your knuckle on the top, but just make sure that you then wrap your thumb around the grip Spread your fingers out, all right, so that they're not all, you don't want your fingers all bunched up. Make sure you stick around to the end because you don't want to end up like this guy who's having a bit of trouble with his grips. Here's a summary of all the grip references. There's a download link in the description so you can print it out. And now I'm gonna demonstrate how to hold each of the grips correctly. There are eight beevils on the butt of the racket. Right-handed players count clockwise, whereas left-handed players count anti-clockwise. We get the base knuckle of the index finger and the heel pad, and we line them both up with the grip numbers that we want. Okay, so let's start with the forehand grip. So I'm gonna hold the racket on edge. Beevil number two is our continental grip. So I put my heel pad and knuckle on number two. I could also put my heel pad on number one. We use a continental grip for serves and for smashes, forehand volley, for backhand volley, forehand and backhand slice, and we can also use it for specialty shots such as drop shots and defensive lobs. If you want to have a powerful serve, you must learn to use the continental grip. It's quite challenging at first, but hard work will pay off in the long run. Now if I go one grip further across onto beevil number three. That will be my eastern forehand grip. If you're just starting out with tennis, use an eastern forehand grip. It's gonna feel like your palm is behind the ball more and you're gonna feel more control. So you'll just be able to point your palm where you want the ball to go and it's gonna be much, much easier. I also like to use the eastern forehand grip for a beginner forehand volley. It helps to point the strings forward and can help a beginner to experience success. But we must transition the player back to Continental as soon as they are ready. That way we don't need to change the grip for forehand and backhand volley. If I go one more to Beevil number four, that'll be semi-western. For most professional players, they use a semi-western grip and it gets a good mix of heavy spin and also can hit the ball at all different heights. So in summary, for forehand grips, if you're a beginner, I would suggest to use an Eastern forehand grip. If you're more advanced, I would suggest to use a semi-Western grip. If you're in an Eastern grip, your ready position's more likely to be like this. If you're in a semi-Western grip, your ready position will more look like a 45 degree angle. With an Eastern grip, you'll have a swing where your arm looks straight up. If you have a semi-western grip, your swing's gonna look more like a letter L. And one further, that is the western grip on beevil number five. My advice would be just stay away from the western grip. We find this grip can't extend through it as much. A lot of your shots are gonna drop short and maybe get too much spin. So what's your favorite grip? Is it eastern? Is it semi-western on the forehand side? Let me know in the comments below. Back to the top now, let's look at one hand backhand grips. If I put my knuckle on beevil number one, that will be the eastern backhand grip. So my heel pad goes on eight, knuckle goes on one. The eastern backhand grip is the most used grip and it is the grip that we recommend. There is also a semi-western one hand backhand grip. We don't recommend that one because it's a little weaker with hitting low balls.
The semi-western backhand grip has the heel pad on eight and the knuckle on eight. Now let's look at the two-hand backhand grips. So we'll start with the continental eastern. So the continental, we want the heel pad on one, knuckle on two. Then the left hand, we put the heel pad and the knuckle on three. But it's left-handed, so we count anti-clockwise, one, two, three to the left, and that's your most common backhand grip. For the two-hand backhand, my advice would be continental eastern. We're looking to extend through the shot, pointing the sword to the target. The male players, maybe we're stronger in the shoulders. It's better for us to extend through. The next most common backhand grip is to leave the bottom hand in continental, but we move the top hand across to semi-western. So we put the knuckle and the heel pad on bevel number four. A lot of the professional girls will use a continental semi-western. We see the continental semi-western more on the female professional tour because female players are very strong in the hips and this swing is all about rotation of the hips. So it's quite good for female players. Our arms are gonna stay more bent, like a letter L, throughout the whole swing. The contact's gonna be right next to your body and the arms stay pretty bent throughout that follow through. Because we can make contact further back, it might not be as necessary to slice. And then finally, a grip that's not used as much these days is an Eastern Eastern. So I need to get a one hand backhand grip, heel pad eight, knuckle on number one. That's my Eastern backhand. And then if I put my left hand into an Eastern grip as well, that's my Eastern backhand. All right, and you'll notice my hands fit together nicely like a glove. So at contact, what you'll see with an Eastern Eastern is both arms being completely straight with a full extension and the palm facing away in the finish. You won't see the Eastern Eastern grip used as much these days. And I think one of the main reasons is because you'll need to change the grip back to Continental to do a slice. Might be a good way for a one hand backhand player to transition to using two hands because the structure is quite similar. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the differences between the two hand backhand grips. With an Eastern Eastern, my hands fit together like a glove and there's no gap between my hands. With a Continental Semi Western, now what you should see is that my fingertips come further around the grip. Uh, if I now go to a Continental Eastern, you can see that my fingers are more so on this side of the grip there as well. And there is a bit more of a gap on the Continental Eastern. Common mistake on the two hand backhand. Their heel pad will be coming off the grip. So when they make contact with the ball, it's, it's a bit wobbly. So we wanna make sure the heel pad is on the grip for the two hand backhand. Let me know what your favorite backhand grips are. Do you like Continental Eastern? Or you're a big fan of the Continental Semi Western backhand grip? Or do you like your one hander? Let me know what your favorite grip is below in the comments. Don't go anywhere yet, unless you wanna end up like this guy again. <laughs> Look out! <laughs> All right, now let's talk about the hand position. A common mistake that a lot of people do is to bunch their fingers up with their knuckles all in a straight line. What we wanna do is spread our fingers out so our knuckles are on a 45 degree angle. And it looks a bit like we've got a trigger finger. Spreading the fingers out helps us to get our knuckle and heel pad onto the correct bevels. What happens is if your fingers are all bunched up, your heel pad's gonna come off the grip. So it's important that we spread the fingers out and have the knuckle and the heel pad on the grip. Now let's talk about how high up you should hold the grip. If I hold the grip lower down on the grip and leave one finger length off the bottom, that's gonna make the, the grip feel more relaxed and more powerful. If I choke up on the grip higher, that's gonna have a stiffer feel to it. Depends on what you're after, but we recommend to have one figure length off the bottom and that should give you a nice relaxed feel. All right, now let's talk about the grip pressure. How hard should you hold the grip? A lot of people think you have to grip really hard to get power, but actually it's the complete opposite. You wanna hold the grip really relaxed. So I would say during your swing, you might be like a three out of 10. At contact, you might firm up a little bit and then relax again in the follow through. I would say in the surf, that's probably the most important one to stay really relaxed on. Another thing I wanna talk about with grip pressure is that if you're gripping too tight, you'll probably end up feeling really sore after you play. So just by relaxing, you might be able to reduce your injuries and feel a bit better after you play. Next, I'm gonna show you how to change your grips. So make sure you stick around, unless you wanna end up like this guy again. Oh. 
Now I want to show you how to go about changing the grip. A common mistake most people do is just leave their forehand grip and then try to hit a backhand. Actually, we need to change the grip. I like to have beginners with both hands on the grip because I'm going to be teaching them a two-hand backhand. They can hit their forehand because I've got their eastern grip. And now when they go for the backhand, they need to change the grip to continental. What you want to do is just loosen your right hand and then grip it again when you feel like you're in the continental grip. All right, now let's talk about how to change the grip for more advanced players. So let's say you've got a semi-western forehand grip, you've got the hand up on the throat. But as you do your split step and you notice that it's a backhand, we need to loosen the right hand. We're gonna spin the racket with the left and then re-grip it again with the right. I'm gonna change it to a continental so I can do a backhand. You might also change it to your eastern backhand if you're doing a one hand. So semi-western grip here, hand up on the throat. As I do my split, I need to loosen the right hand spin with the top hand and then re-grip. I've got my continental now, so I can slide the hand down and then go into my backswing. I'll show you from the side view here. So it looks like that. And you want to practice this at home. You really do want to challenge yourself to get quicker at doing that. Okay, so now I want to talk about how you might hold the grips and change the grips if you're returning serve. A common mistake I see is people holding the grip up here. They don't have time to slide the hand down when the serve's coming too quickly. So my advice would be have both hands on the grip when you're returning. As you do your split step, you can change to your continental grip and get to that backhand return a lot quicker. If you're a one hand backhand player, you wanna have your forehand grip in your ready position. We're holding the racket fairly centered. And now as I do my split step, I can change to my backhand grip or I can leave it in my forehand grip. The Top Spin Pro, really great training aid for working on grip change. I highly recommend it. And there'll be a link down in the description if you wanna get one for yourself. All right, now let's talk about hybrid grips. So uh, for example, the first one I've got there is the right side of one. So what exactly does that mean? Is it grip one or is it grip two? Well, somewhere just in between. I'm a big fan of the right side of one for a beginner two-hand backhand volley. The reason is, if the student has a continental grip, quite often the strings are on a bit of an angle here. Now, if I move that grip to the right side of one, all of a sudden the strings are pointing forward and it makes it a bit easier for a little beginner to control their volley. I also like the right side of one for a beginner learning how to slice. If a student's in a continental grip, they'll probably just open the racket face too much and slice right across it. Uh, if I get them into the right side of one, I find that it helps them to control the slice more. It, again, it gets the string face looking forward a bit more. So I'm a big fan. Now let's talk about the Aussie grip, somewhere in between two and three, uh, because a lot of people don't like to volley their forehand volley in a continental grip. This will feel much nicer for a high volley. The problem is low volleys are gonna be hard and you're gonna have to change your grip again to hit a backhand volley. So whilst it is really, really nice for a high forehand volley, and I might even use it myself if I'm deep behind the service line, hitting a high volley, quite like it. Uh, but the disadvantage is you've got to change your grip again. So for volleys, my advice would be try to learn the continental grip as best you can, so you don't have to change sides. But if you end up in a bit of an Aussie grip, somewhere in between, that's okay too. I like the right side of three as a way to transition a student away from the Eastern forehand grip, maybe across to semi-Western, but I don't really want them to go to semi-Western just yet because I'm scared they might go all the way under. Uh, it feels like it's a little bit further around than an Eastern, but it's not fully semi-Western yet. Uh, as far as other hybrid grips go, let's say for example, I've got my heel pad on three and the knuckle on four, that would be okay as well. So when the knuckle is a bit further than the heel pad, that's probably okay, because we've still got that angle in our knuckles. But you don't want to go the other way. You don't want to have your heel pad on four, a knuckle on three, because all of a sudden, we can't really hold it properly anymore, and that's going to wiggle. So just be careful with hybrid grips. I would stick to having the, the heel pad and the knuckle on the correct grip. Coming up next, let's fix a common mistake serving with the continental grip. So you don't have to end up like this guy again. Okay, a common mistake a lot of people make with the serve is they'll serve with a forehand grip. So with a forehand grip, we can get a nice little backspin on the ball, but your coach comes along and says, nah, you've got to serve in a continental grip. So you move your knuckle across to bevel number two, and then all of a sudden, uh-oh, it's framing. What do I do now? Well, I'm gonna show you how to fix it in just two balls. So for starters, the problem is likely where you're putting the heel pad. 
That one there that I just framed was because the heel pad was way off the grip. Let's get the heel pad onto bevel number two, the knuckle also onto two. So we're in a two, two continental. And what I want you to do is make an X with your arms after you serve it. So you're gonna find it's still quite slicey because you're not used to it. So now on our second ball, what I want you to do is freeze your X out to the net post over there with our two, two continental grip. And let's see what happens this time. So there we go. I froze my X to the net post and I went in beautiful. Why is that? The reason is when you're serving with a forehand grip, our body wants to rotate front on too soon. So by telling yourself to freeze over to the net post and let your continental grip do what it's supposed to do. I hope that tip has helped you. If it does, let me know in the comments below. Changing grips can be really challenging. So having a tool that can help us to do that can be really helpful. This here is the Start Right Grip Trainer. And I've got to say, I've bought nearly every training aid you could ever imagine. And this by far is the best. These things are so good. I've got a whole bag of them and I use them all the time in my lessons. So let's say I want to get it onto continental grip. I'm going to put it onto bevel number three, wrap it around. And now my knuckle will rest on bevel number two. So another really good way to use these is, let's say you've got a student in uh, an extreme Western grip, you want to bring them back to a semi-Western grip. Well, that's easily done. So we can put the start right grip trainer on to bevel number five. It's gonna sit the knuckle on number four. It can help stop them going around to the Western grip. And I think that's a really good thing. Another really important thing to keep in mind, whenever using any training aid, I see a lot of students get really tight and they complain that their arm's getting a bit sore or something. Whenever we do something new, we, we tend to get tight. So my advice would be when using the Start Right Grip Trainer, remind yourself to be relaxed. And there's a link down in the description below if you wanna buy one for yourself. Are you tired of losing all your tennis balls over the fence? Just gone for a walk around the courts here and I found all these balls that have been hit over the fence. So 18, 19, 20. Okay, so there's 20 shots that have been hit over the fence here at Aintree Tennis Club. So clearly, holding the grip incorrectly is a big problem, not just at this club, but around the world. Having the correct grip size is also really important. So I wanna take you through how you can check if your racket is the correct grip size for you. So if your racket is a good size, your index finger should fit snugly between the gap. If there's no gap, your racket is too small, and if there's too much of a gap, that means the grip size is too big for you. My gap size was a little too tight, so I could put an overgrip on and that will make it a little bit bigger. But if you don't own a racket yet and you're looking at buying one, you'll need to know what grip size to buy. So you can measure your hand from the tip of your ring finger to your bottom lateral crease on your palm. Mine was around 11 centimeters, so my grip size was 438. Okay, so now I'm gonna to talk to you about the actual grip itself. So this here is called a replacement grip. A replacement grip is thicker, it has some cushion to it, compared to an overgrip, which is really thin. So the overgrip just gives it a nice new feeling, makes it a bit more sticky. Thanks for sticking around to the end. I have a bonus for you. I've made a grip guide PDF that you can print out. The download link is in the description. So we've gone through a lot of information today about how to hold the grips. I'd love to know what has helped you the most. Was it the knuckle and the heel pad? Was it the hand position, spreading your fingers out? Did that help you? What about how high to hold the grip, having one finger off the bottom? What about the grip pressure? Did holding the grip more relaxed help you to swing better and have less muscle pains? All right, I really hope this video has made a big difference to your game. If it has, make sure you press the like button and press subscribe so you can see more videos like it next time. Also, make sure to check out some of our other videos like the Technique Masterclass. We'll see you next time.